Good morning. Today we're looking at Section 3, Nonlinear Functions, out of Chapter 2, Business Applications, out of the text, Business Calculus with Excel. We're going to look at several different kinds of functions, and I've broken them into groups. The first group of functions are standard algebraic functions that I assume you've already seen. The square root function is SQRT of the value. The cube root, we don't have a name for it. It's simply x to the 1 third. A power function looks like the form a times x to the n. If n is an integer, this looks like a polynomial function. An exponential function, base e, is a times exp to the x. Again, Excel doesn't understand e, but uses exp for the exponential function. If I wanted an exponential function of a different base, I would be a times e to the x. The natural logarithm is the logarithm base e. The common log is the log base 10. And we have the absolute value function. It's noteworthy that I can do several kinds of nonlinear trend lines. So a trend line need not be a line. It can be a polynomial of up to degree 6. Polynomials of degree 2 are called quadratic functions. Polynomials of degree 3 are called cubic functions. It could be an exponential function. When I ask for an exponential function, it's always going to tell me in terms of base e. And if I ask for a logarithmic function, it's always going to tell me in terms of base e again. And then I can do power functions. A second group of functions that don't show up in previous math courses so much are rounding functions. There are two methods of rounding. One is I have a decimal point and I want to round a certain number of digits before or after the decimal point. I can do that with the round, round up, or round down command. I could also say I want units, a certain block, and round to that. Ceiling and floor do that. An example of where we might want to do ceiling or floor is if I'm buying eggs and eggs are only sold in dozens. I need to round up to the ceiling the number of eggs I want to buy. There's also a branching function, if. And then we have functions on lists, minimum and maximum. They work on a specific li a list of specific numbers, not on an interval. Some special notes, the order of operations. Excel has the negation operation as before the power operation, so it would interpret minus 5 squared as negative 5 quantity squared and give you a positive 25. Round up and round down, up and down, are defined as away from 0. So I would, if I'm rounding to, pow to multiples of 10, I would round up minus 5 to minus 10. The digits for rounding are to the right of the decimal point. As is normal practice, I'll follow the structure of the test, but not do the same examples. There are videos of the text examples already attached to the text. As noted, we want to start with algebraic functions. I've set up a worksheet here that if I'm going to look at the formulas, this lets me see how the formulas are. So I've got a series of x's, particular values for a and b. The formula for the square root is square root of, in this case, x plus 2, which means if I want the square root of x plus 2, that should be a5 plus 2, and sqrt. If I want a power function, a times x to the b, I want to specify a and b, I'm going to run down and change my x's, but I want a and b to remain fixed. The exponential function, as was mentioned, is exp of the corresponding x value. Exponential to a general base is going to be a to the x. The natural logarithm is ln. The Kotman log base 10 is log 10. And if I wanted to do log to some other power, it's the log of x and then what my base is. And finally, absolute value is just abs of x. 
One of the things that's worth noting is we're doing trend lines to find formulas for data. I can add a trend line and I'm going to want to display my equation on the chart and I'd like to go make that so that it's a size that's easy to read. So I now have my equation on the chart but when I'm looking at my trend line we started with a linear trend line. Polynomial trend lines are polynomials as mentioned. It lets me go down to degree 2 and notice that's x squared plus something. If I go up, it gives me a cubic. I took something that's almost x squared and added one here and subtracted one there, so it's not quite a quadratic, which means as I go up, it's going to find best fitting curves that are not quite quadratic. But as we look at it, we see that other than the square term, beyond that, those are small numbers up above. So it's pretty close to quadratic. But those are polynomials. An exponential function is going to be a base times e to something to times x. The logarithmic function is a constant times the logarithm minus a constant. Power functions. It looks like it's trying to be a polynomial, but we allow a non-integer value for the power. One of the things that's worth noting is how the logarithmic, exponential, and power functions are computed. It won't work with a negative number or zero. So if I change this value to zero and subtract one rather than add one, Trend lines can't be calculated from data containing negative or zero powers. So when I look at trying to do the trend line, if I made it 2, the trend line shows up. If I make that number 0, it won't work. If we go back to 2, the trend line is there again. I'm going to get the same kind of thing if I try an exponential function. If I made that zero, the exponential function is going to disappear. It only understands how to do exponential and logarithmic and power trend lines of positive numbers. We'll get into why that works at another time. More interesting functions are rounding functions. So I can round up, round down. I've looked at pi the number of digits. I can decide I want two digits or four digits past the decimal point. Notice that the number is rounded up. Rounding goes to the closest side. Rounding up always goes up. Rounding down goes down. For the floor and ceiling, I'm going to multiples of 2.5 and pi. The lower multiple of 2.5 is 2.5. The higher multiple is 5. If I decided that instead I wanted 2.75 for floor and ceiling, I can get what's the multiple below and the multiple above. As was mentioned before, if I make negative pi, floor and ceiling work fine for that, that the floor is below and the ceiling is above. But notice when I'm rounding up and rounding down, I rounded 3.14159 negative. I rounded up to 3.1416. Again, it's taking rounding up as rounding away from zero and rounding down as rounding to zero. The other kind of function that shows up in this section is the if function. The if function lets me take two different sets. And so I had a linear function and a quadratic function, and I've decided the negative numbers should have the linear function, the positive numbers should have the quadratic function. If I want to look at my formulas, I show formulas that if x is less than 0, use the b column, otherwise use the c column. 
the one-sided if, I simply say if x is less than 0, use the b column, and I don't tell you what happens if, I, if it's greater than 0. If we go back and look at what happens, notice that if it was greater than 0, it simply says false for the value there. Again, notice the two-sided one, I'm using the linear values up until I get to 0. When I get to 0, it becomes the, the quadratic value. So these are kinds of functions that show up, the algebraic functions, the rounding functions, and the branching functions that will be used throughout the course. Thank you.